All right, what is up guys? So I have something a little bit different. This is something I've been wanting to do for a little while, so I guess I thought I would finally do a video on it. How's everyone doing? I'm here at the shop. It's a, a Saturday. My wife's in the office hanging out, but I have a lot of these CRVs and I pick them up, I flip them, I go through them quite a bit, and they always seem to have the same issues. So I was wanting to do a video series or a video on what exactly I do um, to go through them, to fix them, what do I see a lot, and how do you diagnose a car. So here's a, a CRV. This is a, a 97 or a 98 CRV, all wheel drive with the B20 in it. It has 200,000 miles and it has a misfire code and it has, you know, it has a miss. It still runs and drives but it's been sitting for a little while. And so now we're gonna go through, and I wanna take you guys to the process of how exactly I figure this out. What needs to be done? Does it need a new head? Does it need a whole new engine? Does it need a valve adjustment? Is a an ignition issue? What exactly is the problem? How do we go about doing that? So it's pretty basic. Since I drove it in here, I wanna let it cool down. So why I bring it in here, um, I'm gonna go ahead and stick it on the battery charger so I can have a nice charged up battery. Um, so I can do a compression test and I wanna let it cool down so I can inspect the valves and see what's going on with the valves. I definitely wanna start there, start with the simplest stuff, because there's no point in really figuring out the rest of the troubleshooting if I have a dead cylinder somewhere, or there's no also, I can't even adjust the valves until this thing cools down anyway. Either way, we need a nice health, healthy battery, and I wanna take a peek underneath this valve cover just to see what we're working with. So, we bring it in, pull it into the bay, moved everything out of the way, and just so you guys know, like. This is my business anyway. I have a whole stash of JDM engines you know, to begin with. This isn't a problem, but there's no point of throwing one in there if it doesn't need it. Let's start with here. These B20 engines can do more than 200,000 miles. That's not a problem, but that's really when they start seeing a lot of the misfire codes because of these exhaust valves tighten up. Or Hondas have really sensitive ignition systems. They can be a little bit finicky. So we'll go through it and figure out what exactly it needs. But for now, Let's get this battery charging and get this valve cover taken off and see what we're working with. And we'll start there. All right. All right, so we got the valve cover off. As you know, you just gotta take off all the little hardware around here, pull out the breather valve, unhook the hose, undo the little power steering hose clamp, and we're there. And as soon as I take this thing off, I can smell it. It smells kind of like burnt oil you can see how maybe this side is a little bit darker than like the rest of it. It looks way darker on the cylinder number four side than the rest of it. Even that one looks lighter, a little bit darker over there, but it kind of smells like burnt oil. And we can take a look at the, the valve cover in here and that looks, that actually doesn't look that bad. It smells bad though. It smells like, I guess hydrocarbons, burnt, you know, exhaust gas, and cooked oil is what it smells like. So we're gonna go ahead and go a little bit further, remove the rest of these plugs, so we can start digging into this ignition system and see where we're at. All right, so we got everything off. It's still charging. I really, it has, obviously hasn't cooled down yet, so I can't adjust the valves. I'm gonna wait till tomorrow when this is all charged up, and we'll go from there. But I just grabbed some feeler gauges and you can tell right there that the exhaust should be, uh, you know, 0.18 millimeters plus or minus 0 0.02 millimeters cold. And I just wanted to take a quick look because I know a lot of times these exhaust valves, they tighten up and that's what causes a lot of misfire and problems. So I just grabbed, you know, even started off with my, my smallest feeler gauge. Uh, I, I may not be my very smallest. I think I might have some smaller, but just that's a 0.13, as you can tell. Quite a bit smaller and tighter than that 0.18, so it should be loose on everything. And obviously, I don't have it lined up. I'll show you guys how to do that here soon. I just wanted to take some quick preliminary readings, see what's going in. You can see, obviously, there's a ton of room there, as it should be. You know, th th these things should be so sloppy at, at that point in time, but here, look at that. We get to cylinder number two, and we can't even get 
that in there. You know, who knows, it's probably on lobe, but that's not a problem. So we'll go over two and then we get to cylinder number one and look at cylinder number one. Cylinder number one's even off lobe. You can tell it's going over there to the side and I can't even get a .13 in there. That is all bad. You know, these things are way too tight. So this obviously we're gonna start with a good valve adjustment and a compression test and start there. So now we know that at least a couple of these exhaust valves are way too tight. We'll let it cool down. Those tolerances will expand and open up. So that'll give us a little bit more accurate reading. But I just even wanted to see, you know, and I could even step my way up, go to like a 15, go to a 16, and see which one of those won't fit. If it's not fitting there, then we definitely know there's a problem. I would like to put them on the looser end to at least that 0.18 or 0.20 millimeter and go from there. But it should be so open on a 13 that, that that would happen, but I'm still even getting drag on some of those. So now we know the issue. So here we are a day later. Actually, I think it's two days later. It's Monday. I left you guys on Saturday. Had church and stuff Sunday. Didn't get to get to get back to this, but the battery's all charged up, feeling great. And now it's time to do this compression test. Um, if you haven't done a compression test before, uh, the easiest way to do it, in my opinion, the best way to do it, remove all the spark plugs, take out the top fuse right here for your CRV. That actually, it's basically, the, it's the fuse to your fuel system. We don't want to be washing the cylinders with fuel, washing off the oil. Um, unplug your distributor so you don't fry your ICM or your coil while you're doing this test. That's a quick foolproof way to do it. I already went ahead, hooked it up, cranked on the the cylinder for you know, seven to 10 seconds. And our first reading is right there, 180 on cylinder number one. So then we're just gonna repeat it for two, three, and four. All right, let's cylinder do it. number two, looks like it has a whopping zero. We will come back to that or get back to that. There's something going on there. So we need to figure that out. Now we know our first step to really start troubleshooting this, this car a little bit more. Um, we had 180, zero, 175, 175. These all came back really normal. I think this engine is probably uh, 200 PSI, 199 is normal when they leave the factory. So it's aged pretty well, but we need to figure out why cylinder number two has such awful compression. Um, and it's only gonna be a handful of things. It's either gonna be the, val the valves, intake or exhaust, more than likely an exhaust valve has been burnt so it's not closing up. Um, or it's gonna be rings on that cylinder number three. But this car did run before. I actually, I drove it quite a ways. So obviously it was running on three cylinders, but now we need to, we'll probably do a leak down test next. Um, adjust the valves, try the compression test one more time. And if we can't get anything to change, either the head's gonna have to come off of this thing or the whole engine's gonna have to come out. We'll start there. Thanks guys. Valves. Was pretty much a failure. I adjusted it, I recompression tested it. I still got zero back on cylinder number two. So that was kind of a bummer. But um, what we can do, however, um, just to be sure, it only takes a couple minutes before we pull the head or whatever else anyway, is a cylinder leak down test. I think this would be time well spent just so we can see if it's coming out here, I kind of left a little white mark on the valve that was giving me the most problems. It still was a little sticky. So we're gonna start there. And yeah, so more than likely that valve is burnt and chipped up. We're gonna do a cylinder leak down test. Basically, you hook this up to a compressor. It looks like this, the little manifold set. And we're gonna fill that cylinder up full of air. And it's either gonna stay in, which would be great, or it's going to come out the exhaust manifold, the intake manifold for whatever respective valves, or it's gonna come out of this crankcase if it's the, the rings that are done for. And that way we know, should we pull the head or do we just pull this whole damn engine out and drop in a delicious JDM one? So let's get it started. All right, so we have the compression tester hookup. Actually, not the compression tester. The, Cylinder leak down tester. I already went and checked it just so you guys know, but we have the gauge zeroed out there as you can see. It's hooked up to the compressor. There's not a lot of air left in it, but we should be able to get it 
pretty dang close. And as you can see, we've got air coming out of there. You can hear it moving around. You can hear it coming right out of that cylinder head. And it's coming out of the exhaust. And I already checked it back here. You can hear it coming out of the tailpipe. I haven't hooked it directly up, bypassed the gauge and hooked it up to the, because the numbers really aren't important. We just wanted to see where that air was going and now we know. So that is how you use the cylinder leak down tester. All right, boys. So as you can see, we, I, us, pulled the head off of this thing Everything looks okay. The cylinders don't look that bad. Look, like we got a little bit of oil in the coolant from pulling the head off. We gotta clean that out. But this cylinder number two, remember, that was the one that was giving us problems. And it looks fine, you know. So when I pulled the head off, here it is sitting on this drip pan because we're trying to make a mess. Well, we rot rotate it back. We can see right there, cylinder number two, that guy has indeed a destroyed and burnt valve. That is the problem. So now we gotta finish disassembling. Now we gotta finish disassembling this thing. Send it out to the machine shop. Or find another head to stick on it and we'll be good to go. I really just think it's just that one valve that's causing all those problems, which like I said, you know, we have plenty of JDM engines laying around. That's not an issue. But what we would like to do is fix the problem. And I've been itching to do one of these and show you. So you know, I, I was hoping it would have been something a little bit easier so I could have just showed you guys a little bit more troubleshooting on how to diagnose a misfire or a rough idle. But on this case, it was a burn valve. Uh, pretty well destroyed. And we could, you know, there's a couple different options. We could, you know, just replace that one single valve, break it in and go from there if we really wanted to kind of cheap out on it. Um, and then, you know, a new head gasket, head bolts, and slap the thing together and send it out the door. But we want to do things right. We want to put the car together correctly. Um, I own a dealership. I don't know if any of you guys know that, that I would like to be able to sell a good car to good people for good money. And I couldn't knowingly send it out the door half-assed. So, yeah. Thank you guys for watching. All right. So, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Uh... I'll let you know when I get this thing back from the machine shop. We'll do another video on how to wrap it all up, put it all back together, and then we'll go from there. As always, like, comment, subscribe. Put down below what you guys want to see. If you appreciated the video, please give me a like or subscribe. We're slowly growing. It's getting frustrating. Uh, I don't know if you can see the, the Subaru right there is almost done too. It's getting cold, man. It's wintertime here in Utah. So hopefully we can kind of get caught up on all this stuff, start making some money, start getting some stuff out the door and then playing around with other stuff. Um, but yeah, thanks so much for watching the video. Take care guys. Bye-bye.